All right, so this class, as we've been talking about, is an overview of different social media, how you can reach an audience. It's um, the new form of marketing. And so we've talked about a couple of networks already. We still have more to talk about because remember, there's part one and part two of this class. Part two starts next week, next month. So today we're going to be covering Facebook. I've spent a little bit of time covering the other networks first uh, because Facebook is, is one of the big ones, but it requires sort of a different mentality on how to use Facebook to reach your audience. So let me get a show of hands here. How many of you currently have a Facebook account? Okay, how many of you currently have a business Facebook account? Notice how the hands went down a lot faster. How many of you are not sure? Do you have a business or a personal one? Because there is a difference. Here's the way you can tell. If your business account is getting friends, it's not really a business account. It's a personal account. If your account is getting likes, that's a business account, a, bi a Facebook business account. So you may have set up your Facebook before and you might have done it the wrong way in that it is set up as a person. It's very easy to do it the wrong way on Facebook. So if you've got your, your company on Facebook but you're getting friends, you're getting friend requests, it's not the right one. We can talk about how to upgrade it and how to fix it, of course. But the point of fixing it is, uh, technically, if you don't have the right type of Facebook account, it could be, it could be shut down because the terms of service, thank you, the terms of service say that thing that we never read but everyone clicks on, somewhere in there it says you will use Facebook the right way. You will use a business account of Facebook for business and you will use a personal account of Facebook for personal. So if you use the wrong one, technically your account could be shut down. Plus you're also going to miss a lot of the features that the business account has. So what we'll do is go ahead and open up your web browser and let's go directly to facebook.com since it seemed that everyone raised their hand and said you have a Facebook account we're not going to go through the process of setting one up but uh, Facebook basically wants you as a person to have a personal account and then you can create and manage as many business accounts as you want that sounds familiar that sounds like Google Plus doesn't it when we talked about Google Plus we created that personal account, but we're never going to use it. I don't want to use Google Plus uh, for personal. I want it for business. So we had to create the Google Plus personal, and then we could skip putting in our birthday and putting in our high school and all of that, and then concentrate on using it for business. Same thing for Facebook. We can set this up. Thank you. We can set this up for personal, but never have to use it. Uh, we need it though to then log into the screen where our business pages are at. I'll show you where that is all, of course, and I'll show you how to set it up. But for the moment, what you should do is you should go to Facebook.com, and again, if you're going to do that, if you're going to follow along with everything we're doing here, you should log in now. If you don't have an account, you'll need to take a moment to set one up. If you don't want to set any of it up and such, <clears throat> that's fine. You can do it at home refer back to the videos and, and try it at home. Remember our, our lab here has deep freeze which is that your passwords and such will erase as soon as you turn off the computer so it's, it's safe, relatively safe. If you want to either create an account or sign in. So I'm going to sign in with my personal email account because just like Google Plus I can use one email account to manage multiple businesses. You can use a personal email, you can use a business email, doesn't matter, but you're going to need to log in and then I'll show you how to use it as a business account. Hopefully nothing untoward appears here. 
But uh, take a moment to sign in if, uh, if you're having any trouble, of course, call me over. But you want to sign in, I'll show you what uh, are the nuances. This assumes you have an account already. So Facebook is like Google Plus in that uh, a person can set up and manage multiple business accounts. And like Google Plus, we can set more managers uh, to help us manage it. If, I'm, if, if there's more than one person in my company that is going to help me to, uh, to manage this because I've got to run my business, I've got to run payroll, I've got to do it all, and Facebook, well, you can have other people in your business helping you manage it. They will have their own login, their own personal information to log in with, and then we will set them as a manager. Let me get my notepad file, and again, I'll be writing some notes here, and I'll put these notes in the, in the folder at the end of the day. This will give you a chance to sign in or sign up if you need to. But Facebook, the largest social network. By last count, I believe there's about 1.6 billion users. I didn't misspell that. That's a billion, not a million, a billion. A thousand million, a billion. In the world, the population of the world is like 6 billion, 6.5 billion, 7 billion, something. So lots and lots and lots of people all over the world use Facebook. Therefore, it's one of the best ways to reach an audience because there's so many people on it that you could reach, that your business could reach. I said earlier though, it's a double-edged sword. We'll see why a little bit later. Facebook has personal profiles and business pages. Same sort of concept as Google Plus. Like Google Plus. Um, you can uh, assign multiple managers to help you run your Facebook page. You can give other people access, other levels of access. You as the creator of the page have full access to do anything you want on the page. You can give other people access to various levels. To the lowest level, that's simply all that they can do is read the content. To higher levels, that they can create posts, that they can create photo albums. Um, you can give them administrator access like you, but that's a bit dangerous because theoretically, if you give someone else administrator access, they could kick you out of your own page. Let's say you had someone else in your company to also manage your Facebook page. And let's say they're working and now they got fired and now they're disgruntled and whoops, they have access, they have full administrator access and they're disgruntled and they log back into the Facebook and suddenly they delete everything. Fire me, will you? So they delete the whole thing. We will see that we have different levels of managerial roles like Google Plus for you uh, to have more control. So we'll say here, uh, create, yes. You can, uh, definitely. If you have more than one administrator, an administrator can lock out another one. You can lock out the bad administrator. You have to, of course, do it before they do anything malicious. And perhaps a better solution is not to give that many people the highest level of access. Definitely, yes. So um, create a personal and then create business page. So the same thing like, like Google+. And I, and I must say early on, full disclosure, Facebook is not my favorite. I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook for personal things. I don't like, for various reasons we can get into later, I just don't like it personally. For business, however, I love it. For business, we use it in my company for clients. We use it with gusto. We manage all of these different pages. We do it well. It's just that personally, I don't like to log in and put my, my stuff there and 
yeah, friends and family, they say, well, why aren't you on Facebook? And I just don't like it. I don't like the culture behind it, and we can get into it later. But for business, it's great. It's a really powerful tool, Facebook for business. So we'll get right into it. Hopefully you've logged in by now. And you don't need to do anything on the personal. It's personal. There's my name right up on top there. There's my picture. It's my personal account. It has my name. And now if I look, if you look, do you see a little black triangle in the top right corner? I'm sure it has some sort of official name. But that little triangle up on the top, if you click it, you'll see various options here. For example, the logout screen, settings and help, and all of that. On mine, do you see that it says your pages? These are various business pages. And we will see that with business pages, they can be just about for anything. So I've got a couple of companies. I've got my Instructor Victor Facebook page to keep people up to date with what classes I'm teaching. You can make a Facebook page for anything, really. But at the top right corner, if I click on the triangle, it says, these are your other pages to manage. You probably or you possibly don't have this. Let me get a show of hands. How many of you do see something here in the Your Pages? Okay, good. A lot of people had raised their hands previously that they had a business page. Well, if you don't see it here, you might not really have the business page set up. And we can talk about fixing it. The point is here that I've logged into personal, but I'm not going to use personal. I haven't posted anything here like in a month or two. People are like, what's wrong with Victor? I haven't, I haven't seen him. But I just don't use Facebook personally. I use it for business. On um, mine, I manage more than one business for various clients. So if I, if you see see more, go ahead and click see more. If you don't see it, don't worry about it just yet. But if you see the see more link, I'm going to click it. And look at this. These are the various other entities that my personal account has access to to manage. The other people in my company see a similar thing. They have access to these or different business pages. Um, right here, Pablo pop, popped up and said, inviting you to like one of his business pages. Yes? Is there any way to change the order of these? I have a page that doesn't even, isn't active anymore, and it's on the top. If it's not active anymore, it might be useful to remove it. But I don't believe we can order this. Okay. Um, I don't. I can click and nothing happens to order it. I believe how it orders itself up here perhaps might be in the order of last used, but you're saying you haven't used it recently? Sometimes, unfortunately, I have to say with Facebook, some things are just weird. They, they, they are the way they are, and we have to, live to learn to live with them. But at the very least, here from this screen, I can see all of the pages I have to manage. So if you have a page that you, that you have to manage, you can click on it, and things don't really change too much. It still shows, Victor, you're, you're logged in. But this is the page that I would work with, and I'll show the nuances of it in a little bit. But let's say, before we get ahead, um, you don't have different pages to, to work with. Let me briefly look at what if you wanted to create a new page? Because I sort of recommend for the lesson we're about to have, I recommend let's create a brand new page. It can be temporary, it can be fake, we can fill it with gibberish. But I'd like to show what is the process of creating a new page because uh, Facebook keeps changing and adding new features and some of the features that are new are not part of the older version of Facebook. And so if you haven't been using your business page, if you built it, if you, if you activated it a year ago, but haven't really used it, I sort of recommend perhaps to think about creating a new version of it to get the latest features and have that one be the main one and the old one can be merged into this new one or the old one can be deleted. So this is going to be up to you what you want to do. Either create a brand new one, use an existing one, I'm going to go through the process here. Do you see there's a create a page? I'm looking at all my pages. I'm going to click create a page. And I can create this variety of types of pages. Give your brand, business, or cause a voice on Facebook and connect with the people who matter to you. It's free to set up. 
just choose a page type. So I can create, if I've got a band, there's a spot right there, I can create a band page. If I've got some sort of nonprofit organization, I've got there under cause or community. If I've got a business, well, you have to decide local business or company. The big difference is with local business, this will be connected to a location in the real world. This will be connected to a map. If I have a real business that's on Main Street, I would most likely want to select this one. If I have a business that I run out of my spare bedroom, well, I don't want to put my home address, so I would do perhaps the company one. And we can switch between them. If you do go through local business, you're going to have to fill in a valid address of an existent place. Uh, and it's going to want to verify that you are the legitimate owner here. Obviously, this is the way for it to prevent that someone steals your, your listing on Facebook. For us, I would recommend if you're creating one like me, for the moment I would recommend company. You, there's a little bit less to fill in. You don't quite have to verify any address. So for us, just to show you what it looks like, I will go through the second one here, which is company. There's a variety of categories to help you get found by, by people. So I'm going to do Victor's Bakery, fictional company, Victor's Bakery, a brand new Facebook page. Out of all of these, I think food and beverage will work well. Victor's Bakery. That's going to be the name of my business on Facebook. That's not going to be my address, however. My Facebook link. I can claim that a little bit later. This is the name if someone searches. We've got search up on the top on Facebook. If someone is searching Victor's Bakery, they can find my business. That's the name that I put up here we'll be able to claim the name a little later. And again, this is the thing that no one reads, but everyone agrees to. The rules, how are you going to use Facebook, do's and don'ts and all of that. You're not going to impersonate another entity. You're going to put real things. You're not going to abuse the ad system and all of that stuff. I don't have it memorized what this is about, but I've never had trouble with the terms of service. I'm going to select Get Started. Again, if yours is slightly different, let me know because um, depending what you've chosen, it may be a little different. In my case, then, I get four things to fill out. You may have more, you may have less, that's okay. There is a spot to add description. I think this has a limit, 155 characters. So you have a, a little bit more than a tweet to describe your company. And this is a good place to think about adding these valuable keywords. What's your company about? How will you get found? When people click up here to search, and you have some of these keywords that people search for in this box, they can find you. Now, I'll show you where this box is if you already have a page set up. We'll get to that in a bit. But this is, I think, something I mentioned previously, and I'll write it in the notes again here. Whenever there's any sort of bio, so fill out your bio in terms of keywords. Not literally a collection of keywords, but complete sentences that include those keywords. It include the keywords that people might search for. I can't rely on simply the name of my company for people to find me on Facebook. Victor's Bakery, well, that's a little obvious. It seems that they're a bakery. But if they've got a more esoteric name like Victor's Designs, well, does that mean interior design, graphic design, web design? What kind of design? Then this bio, this bio, biographical information is much more valuable because I've got a spot here to write more complete sentences full of keywords of what people could find. It's perfectly fine to use the same sort of bio throughout the different networks that can keep that can create a consistent voice. So let's say in this case I, I'm going to write something like uh, East Lake Bakery 
specializing in um, organic and healthy versions of, uh, of your favorite treats. Again, I have 155 characters. I should take advantage of that as much, fill it in as much as possible. But don't stress about writing here a magnum opus about the, the perfect description. This is just one of the things that will help you get found on Facebook. Other things that we'll look at will show us perhaps more effective ways, but this is still valuable to help you get found on Facebook. If you've got some other website, some other entity, you can also add it here. It says you can put your website address, if you've got an Instagram address, put it in, Twitter, or other social media. That's up to you, but if you do have a website, if I've got Victor's Bakery com, I would want to put it in. Because it's changing and I have to do the research and educate myself more because these things change all the time. Facebook is starting to roll out more and more an ability for you to have some sort of product inventory and, and catalog on your site. Uh, that's very new. In the old days you didn't really have that. And so I would always say in my classes, you still want to put a website here because you're going to want to bring them back to your website because that's where you're going to sell them the product. That's where they're get, you're going to sell them the product, solicit donations, have them read your articles, whatever. You still want to guide them back to your site. And as I said, it's changing. From what I'm seeing, some accounts are getting the ability to have now a catalog on your Facebook. One valuable thing that you could still do here, though, is put some sort of link to a landing page on your site as an incitement, as an enticement to get people to go to your website. And what that is, I believe we've talked about landing pages before, which is some sort of page that you create on your site that you guide people to exclusively from someplace. The only way for people to get to this link is if they know about it on Facebook. This link is not a link that they can get to from the main menu of my site. So just to reiterate that, landing pages, pages or screens on your site that people can only get to, get to via special means, such as from an email message from a tweet, from a Facebook bio page, from a business card. You could have a special address on your business card that you give out at networking meetings. The only place, the only way for the person to get to that page is if they have your business card. So again, it's, it's, an, it's an enticement, it's a landing page for, the, for you to direct traffic to a certain place on your site. This assumes that you go to your site and create it however your software lets you create pages on your site. Question? Yeah, let's suppose I want to uh, direct someone from Facebook to my website. I want to give them, let's say, 100% off on the product. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, obviously, I want to do it once. So if they get to the landing page, they go out of the landing page that they're going to help them and see it. Mm -hmm. How do I convince that happen only once or project that to a uh, with software like WordPress, um, you can do it several ways. If you want to protect a particular site or page on your site so that it's only used once this way, you can do it via, for example, setting a password on the page. You can do that relatively easy in WordPress. More complex and more secure would be to have some sort of coupon system on your site, and via that coupon system you'll be able to manage that this was used once and no more because by itself there's very little protection for it to be abused. So it's really more in the scope of how can you do that on your website rather than how can you control it with Facebook. Now Facebook does have something here about deals which you can activate to be active for a certain amount of time. After the time passes then the link is no longer available. We'll get to that as well.
So here then I'm doing that. And the last thing, some of you may see this, some of you may not. I see a spot for me to add my address. That is to claim my Facebook address. It says here pages with usernames can also be can create a custom URL. At the moment, Facebook is going to give me some sort of link that looks like facebook.com slash pages slash one, two, three, four, five slash Victor slash bakery. Some weird huge name that is not very user friendly. If you have the ability to create a username, I mean a, a Facebook address name here, very good. You'll be able to claim that name. So I'll have facebook.com slash Victor's bakery. If it's taken, it's taken. I can't take it from someone else. I believe I said this previously that these networks really need to get on the ball about releasing these unclaimed unused names. People create a Facebook name two years ago, they're gung-ho about it, and then they forget about it a year later. And that name, I want it, I'm going to use it, but Facebook really isn't going to take it away from anyone else. Twitter's not going to do that. Google Plus, they really need to fix that. And if you're doing this simply as sort of like testing like I am, you may not want to claim your name yet if it's a testing account. Uh, looks like my browser's crashing. <clears throat> That's always fun. Question. Yes, um, Victor, would uh, the business name, I'm going to go ahead and try that, would the business name suffice, or would you suggest putting the business name in San Diego in that Facebook username? Is it unnecessary to add San Diego and just put the business name? I would just go for the business name if you're able to, if it has not been claimed. Okay. If it has been claimed, then you might have to then settle for adding. I don't know to like save them for a claim. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. Let me go back to this again. It seemed to have crashed. Let me do it one more time. See, it happens to me as well. Looks like you already managed it. Okay, great. Victor's Bakery 2. Okay, so let's say I have a bio, let's say I have a link, whatever. Next. So, then there's going to be a spot about a profile picture. Again, you don't want to be the little basic egg on Twitter. You don't want to be the, the simple little present icon on Google+. Plus. You don't want to be the white flag on, on Facebook. You want to have your icon, your branding. Notice again here it's also a proportional graphic. It's square here. Over on Twitter it was, I believe, a, round, a little rounded, rounded square. It was a square with rounded corners. Um, Pinterest, I believe, the logo there, your logo becomes round. Um, it's basically on all of these networks. They have they have your logo as a as a as a square usually. So I set up here. Fill in your bio. Also add your company logo. Should be a square. If it's not a square, it might cut off the edges or it might stretch it. I forget which of the two it does. I think it stretches it. It'll look a little weird. So you'll need to use some sort of graphics software to force it to be a nice looking square shape. Can't quite talk about that in the lecture, but during lab time we can do so if you need that help. I don't have a logo to upload, so I'm going to skip this at this point. I have an item three, which is if you're going to want to quickly get to this page to manage it, to work with it, Remember when you log into your personal Facebook, on the left you have a, a menu. One of the menu items is favorites. It will help you, if you add your page to the favorites, that will help you quickly get back to your page to edit it. I usually skip this because I like to go up to the triangle and select the page that way. Both should work the same way, but years ago I had an experience where I had clicked on my on the business page on the left side and I started to write an update and whoops it wrote it as Victor instead of uh, you know John's amazing web design that is it added that content as me the person not as the business and I have much better 
result, I had the much better result of selecting the business page from the triangle, and I never had the problem that Victor was the one that posted to a business page. I believe they fixed that, but I'm paranoid about it, and so I prefer to skip adding this to my favorites, and I switch to my business page via the triangle at the top right. I'm going to skip it. This is one of these screens that you don't see easily if you've already had a Facebook page for a year or two. They added this within definitely the last two years, maybe the last year or so, which is preferred page audience. And again, I'll show you where this page should be if you've already got an existent page. Although I do find oftentimes when I teach this class, when we talk about Facebook, and people say, I can't find that on my page that I've had for five years. It's not there. There's nothing I can do about it. It's not there. Facebook hasn't activated it to someone that's had a page from that age. Tell us about the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who ma matter to you most. Again, your target audience, your demographics. Who would care most about Victor's Bakery? Who would care most about your business? Let's take a look at what this is about. And again, if you don't have this screen, we'll see this screen a little bit later. We've got locations. Everyone in this location, people who live in this location, people recently in this location, people traveling. A lot of things we can do here. Let's say then included, excluded. Let's say I've got a business on Main Street and I'm selling my product, Victor's Bakery. I'm selling from Main Street all over San Diego. So I'm going to put here San Diego, and it's going to suggest, you mean San Diego, USA, San, uh, California, San Diego, Texas, San Diego, Venezuela? No, I mean San Diego, California. You can select that. And you can add more than one target here. You notice it's going to say 25 mile radius. So it's reaching the people down in Tijuana, over in uh, Hamul, I guess, and close to Escondido. Well, if it's not hitting Escondido and Oceanside, I say, okay, I also want to reach the people in Oceanside. And you can add several of these targets. The problem is, again, um, do you need to? Are you spreading yourself too thin? I'm, I'm a business on Main Street, Chula Vista. Do the people in Oceanside, are the people in Oceanside really going to care to drive all the way down to Chula Vista for my business? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. That's up to you to decide. What I'm saying here is you don't really want to put in like five or ten locations here. You're diluting your message because all good successful marketing, advertising, is that we reach a specific audience. So maybe depending on your business. Well, let's take it the other way. What if, what if I have a product that I ship all over the U.S.? So United States the whole nation. What if I ship a product all over the world? Well, honestly, do you really expect to reach everyone in the whole world? What about if I'm shipping products to English-speaking countries? That's still a lot of countries. But let's say I'm focused on larger target audiences, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to reach USA and Canada. So whatever makes sense for you, you want to select here. And notice we have these other ways as well. People who live here. The difference there is that I could have Victor's Bakery in Chula Vista, but I want to target the people in La Jolla. And that's not so far away to maybe entice them to come down to Chula Vista for my business. So I can say, I'm going to target people that live in, in La Jolla. Again, 25 mile radius is going to be pretty big, so maybe really hone it in just down to 10. It doesn't go lower than 10. It can go up to 50. And let's say perhaps, okay, I don't know what I want to select, and I've got drop pin. Instead, what I can do with this is I say I want to target people specifically right here, wherever that may be, and it's going to be that radius. 
the, this whole screen here is about uh, Facebook is going to help me to some degree be found by the people that I'm targeting, trying to target here. This is one of the reasons why Facebook is so good. You can really target the people that might care about your product to reach over to their wallet and buy your product. In the real world, real world marketers would kill for this. You know, a, a, a real business in the real world trying to reach a real audience. They don't have this sort of power until they get online. Yes? Exactly. Unfortunately, you can only choose one of these. So I would try to choose the one perhaps that will be the bigger audience. So only one of these at a time, because I might want to choose this one. These two are really good as well. People traveling in this location. I might have a travel business and I want people that are visiting San Diego, someone that came from Seattle to visit sunny San Diego, well, I can target them. Question? Um, uh, oh, is this the part that you're saying, if you set up your page years ago, that you maybe you want to set up a new page to be able to take advantage of this? Yes. You can't do it retroactively? We may be able to. We'll need to check on your particular okay. one. I'm going to show the screen up here where this should be at if you've already got a page okay. that exists. But if you don't see that screen when I show it up here, you might have to create the new version of it. So how does it know that people are traveling here? Well, we give away so much of our lives online that people know all about you, what's going on. So the um, Facebook stores all that information and we could use that to our advantage to target people that are visiting San Diego to really have them uh, see your business. So whatever makes sense for location, you can fill that in. I'm just going to keep it simple for the moment, San Diego. Maybe you can exclude. Maybe your product cannot be sent to or shipped to certain places. You have exclude. If you really need to deal with a lot of locations, you have bulk locations, but that's a bit complicated. Age. Right here, it's basically everyone, 18 to 65 even and higher. Even though you can go down to 13, you have to be at least 13 to use Facebook. If, if, you, have, if you know anyone that's using Facebook under 13, tell them to stop, because you shouldn't be using Facebook if you're under 13. But here we can target people of all of these age ranges, and if it makes sense for your business or product, I would narrow it down. Again, successful companies are successful partly because they target an audience that helps them make, helps them become successful. So if my business, well, I'm going to say I, my business, my cupcakes and all of that are a little on the high end. They're organic and all of that. They're a little on the high end. I'm going to target 30-year-olds and up. Maybe those would have a, a little bit of a better income, and so this is my target audience. I can change this, of course. And we'll see. We will be able to change these targets on a per-case basis also. This applies to your whole page in general, but we'll be able to target as well. So I'm going to say here... Um, Set up your, what do they call this again? The preferred page audience. As best as possible. To reach your audience. Let's say customers. We can also target an audience uh, on a per post basis. We'll see how to do that, of course. We'll see that we were, we're going to post a particular picture, and we're going to want these certain groups to see it. We'll post a different picture. We want these people to see it, this different group. So we'll be able to target our message to the right audience to hopefully get it, get more uh, conversions. Remember that term, impressions, conversions. Yes? Victor, I somehow ended up on my home page and got off of my map. Is there a way to go back to that to get to the gender and age 
If it's not working with the back button, just wait a moment and I'll show how you can back, get back to the screen from a different screen in a moment. Gender. Again, if it makes sense for your business, you may want to target a gender or leave it to all. Let me look at interests in just a moment. This is a very cool and powerful one. Languages. So if we're targeting a particular language, um, I can put here multiple ones. I want to target an English audience. Well, U.S. English. And I want to target Spanish. So um, Spanish. Also um, Filipino. I can target various various audiences. Now it's still, however, up to you to create content in those languages. It's not really going to translate it for you for those languages. This is going to show your content to people that identify with that language, but it won't translate your content to those languages. Okay, interest. This one's really good because every time you're on Facebook and you click a like on something, that's an interest. You're telling Facebook, I like this, I'm interested in it for some for some reason it it's important to me. Facebook is collecting all of that data for a decade, so it has a huge database on what people like. There's like a fascinating sociological experiment that could be created via Facebook's data. What do people like? You can get a glimpse of it right here. If I start typing, for example, chocolate, I'm seeing chocolate, dove chocolate, chocolate brownie, chocolate chip cookies. And if you hover over a particular one, it says 253 million people on Facebook have selected they've liked chocolate. If I look at chocolate chip cookies, 16 million have, it, it have clicked on a like for chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate cake, chocolate bar, hot chocolate, 11 and a half million people on Facebook have liked that. If I don't know what to type here, I would suggest instead check out Browse. Then it's going to give you larger ideas of categories that you can get deeper in. If you click the plus, you will select it, but if you click the triangle, it'll open to show you more. So let's say, what's under food? If I simply select food, that's one billion people that are interested in food. That's way too big of an audience. Again, you want to try to get a little smaller. I can't exactly tell you. Make sure it's got a thousand people. Make sure it's got 10 million people. I can't tell you exactly what size for you to choose. It's going to depend on yours, your business. A big target audience might work well for you. A small one might work. I don't know. We will see that we will need to do a little bit of testing to see what works best for you. But in general, I'm going to say, what, what else is under food? Cooking, cuisine, restaurants. I don't see baking, but I'll look under cooking. There's baking. 140 million. That's a really good amount of people. Now that is global. That doesn't mean 140 million people in the US or San Diego. That's global. But we can further refine it. Remember up here with locations. We can select more than one. Um, you know, three to five is good. You don't want to put seven and ten and twelve and twenty of them. Again, then you're, you're too spread out. When you try to reach everyone, you might not reach anyone. So, with interests, try uh, to be within three to five interests, groups of interests. Yes. Um, it seems like if you would try to reach the maximum number of people, provided they're all within a certain interest area, that that would be better than just trying to narrow it to a, a, a smaller selection. The thing is that we will get into much more detail later. Facebook itself prefers that you target. You you don't exactly see it here, and that would be good for us to to know here. But as we go on throughout the class, we will see that it's much more advantageous to target. It's much more advantageous to narrow down. And it's great that I can reach 10 million instead of 1 million. But really, Facebook will want you to be a little bit more targeted. So that's what I would recommend. 
So can you go back and take some out? Yes. If you've already done this and left the screen, I will show us where we can get back to the screen. If you're still here, then you can just hover over the interest and click the X to remove it. As I start to add an interest or two, it's going to suggest other ones. Frying, flavor, culinary art, batter. Apparently 5 million people have expressed an interest in batter. Um, so, you know, three to five of them. I'm just going to choose three and then we'll go on. Um, cake. Sure, I'll do cake. Cheesecake. I've got a few now, so I'm narrowing my audience. Any questions on this screen before going on? All right, let's click Save there. This is then the page itself. Um, there's a spot to add a cover image. I never added my picture, so I still want to add it at some point. I can easily click on these items to then add some branding there. I would want to do that. You can use the same one as the other networks. This is like sort of like the control panel of the page. So you have all of these little screens that we can look at. It's reminiscent of a personal one, but they'll have, they'll have, there will be different things. We're going to be getting, for example, page tips, some examples of what you can do to make your page more effective. Let's look at a general overview of what we have here, then we'll get into specifics. Then we'll talk about getting back to that demographics screen if you don't have it. Um, at the very top strip, you have the Facebook icon that will always take you back to the home screen of, of your personal Facebook. You've got the search box that I'm currently looking at my Victor's Bakery. Other people have the search box there to search keywords of what they want to find on Facebook. The rest of the strip up there, that's your personal notifications and such. Below that, we have this bar that we don't have as a personal page, as a personal profile. We have look at my page, look at the messages that people have sent me via my page. We will see that we have the ability to converse with our clients privately via messages. I believe the default is that people can send your business page a message. I believe that's on by default. You may or may not want that, and I'll show where to turn it on or off. But the messages screen is where you would communicate with your clients. So page, the main, we can say dashboard, place where you see your content, and publish content. So upload a picture, upload a video, links, whatever. The, the page link is where the main, the main stuff happens of your, of your page. Messages is private communication with customers. Can be deactivated if desired. If you don't want to deal with customer you know, tech support via your Facebook page, if you've got a contact form on your home page, on your website, and it's working fine, then keep that. This will be an extra bit of, of work that you need to do. We can see that we can set up, for example, autoresponders and um, away messages and such to help you deal with customers. But if that's too much work, you've already got other things to do, this can be deactivated. I'll show where a little bit later in the settings notifications. This is where you keep up to date with everything happening to with your site uh, based on your customers. What have they liked on your page? What have people shared of your of your page? Any other activities will, will show up here. 
notifications keep up to date with what customers do on your page. This is like the little uh, the little bell icon on Twitter where you've got notifications. This is like the icon on Google Plus where it gives you a number of what notifications you have. All these networks have some notification screen to tell you what's happening, what customers are interacting with you. Insights. Insights you may or may not have. I see that sometimes some people have this, some people don't. But insights is about checking your your activity in a different way, about the reach of your page, meaning how many people saw my page. Those are um, those are uh, impressions. Remember, we've got the concepts of impressions and conversions. We've got also conversions. They call it here post engagement, which is someone clicked on this, someone shared that. So insights. You don't get this insights screen if you've got a personal profile. Facebook doesn't believe that a person needs that. A business needs that. It's one of the many reasons why you want to have your page as a business page and not a personal profile. So insights. This is check impressions and conversions. What was effective? What was not effective? I posted something twice this week and posted something twice last week and looking at the two weeks in total of information, this one was more effective. This picture really worked. A lot of people clicked on it. This one didn't work. That could tell me, okay, don't try that method again, try this method again. Insights, data, analytics, very important for us to make sure we're not wasting our time on social media. Publishing tools. This will be a list of everything that you've published. This is similar to what's on page, but this just consolidates it and lets you organize it in different ways. We will see a little bit later, Facebook has given us our, the ability, relatively recently, to schedule posts where I have an idea of things I want to share on, on Facebook. I have five things I want to share, but something today, something tomorrow, something in two days, something next week. And instead of me running back to my computer and forgetting to do it, I can set up, we'll see how, to schedule posts and they will automatically publish themselves. <clears throat> We will see also, uh, okay, I need to write this post. I don't have time. I need to leave. I'm going to save it as a draft. I'll be back to it. All my drafted posts will be listed here, ready to, for me to work on them again. Expiring posts, I'll mention that later, but that's also very powerful. Yes? Okay, so uh, you schedule a post in Castle of Bayer? You can. Yep. We come back to the screen. We see that it's about to be published in three hours, and we say, never mind, and then you cancel or you schedule it for a later time, or you, or you publish it right now. You can still change it. Other things we'll look at a little later, but publishing tools. See everything you've shared, have scheduled, in draft or expiring. Again, I'll explain expiring a little later. Expiring. We'll look at settings in, in detail in just a moment. And then finally we've got help. So we've got a video library tour. Short videos that will help us understand all the features of Facebook. 
advertiser support. If we choose to engage in doing advertising on Facebook, guess what? They give us a little more support because we will see we can use pretty much all the social networks either completely free or if we pay some amount we will be able to use it perhaps more effectively. And these networks give you a little bit more preferential treatment if you pay if you use the paid versions of the networks. So we can get a little bit more help from there. Uh, there's a whole help center where I, where I can go look up a bunch of other information to help me out, and then if I'm having trouble, something's not working, I can send feedback. <clears throat> so we'll help. Um, so browse it a bit at least to see what's available. As a beginner, it may be very valuable to go in there once in a while and look at their articles and look up concepts and read a little bit more and, and educate yourself on it because these networks change all the time. They improve, they get smarter, sometimes they add new features. I keep hearing about a certain feature. How does it work? It's going to be in the help. You can, of course, look it up, go do a Google search, but why not get it straight from the horse's mouth? You can go to the help section and look up well, how does the calendar work? And I can get the info from them. Any questions on any of these items so far? Let's go look now. Yes. Canvas. Look, did you that? I didn't, and honestly, I need to educate myself on that one. I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Does anyone know anything about Canvas? It might be very important. I need to check it out myself, but I'm not exactly sure. I might have added this one recently. No Canvas is created yet. Huh. Seems complicated, but fun. Okay, so we'll look at that later. Canvas Builder. Let's go look at settings. There's a lot of settings here. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I will mention a few settings that I highly recommend that you that you look at um, because they're valuable in the experiences that we've had in my company for clients. Notice on the left side, we've got all of these subsections, general settings, notification settings, page roles. If you take a quick look at page roles, this is the screen where you can add more people to help you manage your Facebook business page. Click on that and it says everyone who works on your page can have a different role depending on what they need to work on. The administrator right now is just myself. But I can add more people, and this assumes they have a Facebook page. You cannot have other people work on a Facebook page unless they have a Facebook account. If you try to have someone that doesn't have Facebook, it'll ask them, please create a Facebook before you can manage this. Again, they do not need to use it for personal purposes at all, but they need to create a personal account so that then they can manage this business account. So I'm trying to add someone from my contacts. You know, I just select someone from the contacts. These are the various roles. And they basically go in order from most powerful to least. And you will get a little blurb right below about what can this do. The editor can edit the page, so add the bio, change the graphics, send messages to customers, publish content like pictures and albums and videos, create ads, see which admin created a post, view insights. It's the second highest level. The highest level lets you do all of that as well as add and remove people from editing the page. This is what I'm saying about if you give other people admin rights, theoretically, they might be able to kick you out of your own page. I've never had it happen to any of our clients that I've heard, but you might want to be careful about that. Usually editor is good, but less power down to moderator can respond to and delete comments, send messages, see which one created, create ads, and view insights. Um, so this one cannot create content. This one cannot share a picture or share a link or share a video, but it can deal with responding to people, 
responding via messages or on the home page and all of that and so forth analyst simply all they can do is log in and see the insights to see what posts were affected and such so that's up to you if you want to add other people and then they'll be listed here and you'll be able to remove them if you'd like related to uh, to page roles let's jump over to post attribution if this asks you to leave or stay if you're making any changes for real save your change but if you're not like me I'm gonna say leave the page post attribution is the spot where you can say who is posting under what name it should hopefully be under the name of the business that's usually what you want Victor's Bakery is posting as Victor's Bakery the opposite is Victor Campos is posting on behalf of Victor's Bakery you may or may not want that usually probably you don't it's gonna depend on your company but let's say I am an affiliate marketer my name is the important part of the business so maybe I do want to be sharing photos and links and PDFs or whatever as Victor. That's up to you to decide. There's no save button here. As soon as you select one, it'll, it'll implement it. Notifications. Um, this one's for you to look at and decide. I, I'll, I'm just going to leave it as is, but you need to think about looking at notifications, which is, do you want to give me some alert every time something happens, or do you want to send me like a digest? Usually, probably, you want the, the first one, tell me everything that happens at once so I can deal with it. If you get too many notifications, if you're too popular, which is a good problem to have, of course, you could set it to a digest every apparently 12 to 24 hours you will get one big update if you want no updates you can turn it off I don't recommend that one because you you want to know if someone is interacting on your page especially negatively so you can deal with it And at the moment you'll get notifications for all of these activities you can go in manually and turn them off whichever you don't want We said about messages. This is part of that setting. If someone messages your page, do you also want to get notified? Yes or no. That doesn't turn off the ability for messages. That's going to be over on the messaging screen we'll look at in a moment. But usually, yes, I want to be notified. Someone sent me a message on my page. Let me answer it. Same thing with email or text messages. If you put a phone number in into Facebook, it could send you a text message when something happens on your page. So I can't really advise you too much on these. It's up to you. The defaults are fine. But if you're getting too many notifications from Facebook, this is where you edit it. Let's look at messaging. We have a section of general settings and response assistant. It looks like they will probably be adding many more ways to work with this because there's sort of like a little table of contents. Jump to that section and it'll jump you there. Click on that, it jumps you there. There's not a lot to look at, but I have a feeling they're going to add more features. That's why they're doing this little section thing here. But the sections are general. Um, when you're replying to a message, press enter or not the assistant instant replies all of these are are off um, if you start to turn one of these on for example someone sends you a message it will let them know hi thanks for your message we're not here right now but we'll get back to you if you want to leave like some sort of little simple auto responder you can do that you can change it you can do an instant reply similar to that. 
some sort of greeting. What would you like it to say when someone messages you? So all of that's optional. But think about yourself. If you were to be contacting some business on Facebook, would you like it that you're getting some feedback, that you're getting some assurance that someone has heard your complaint and is going to deal with it? If you leave all of those off, the user doesn't get too much feedback. They might think, well, you don't care. You're not serious. You're not going to answer these things. So it's recommended to think about turning these on and maybe crafting the message for your audience to say, we we hear you, we will help you soon. Let's jump over to general and let's take our first break because we've got a lot of little things to look at here with a lot of recommendations I'll give you. Let's take our first break. It's 7.10. We'll take a break until 7.20, and then we'll look at all of these ways to fine-tune your site. <clears throat>